Can I get an encore? Do you want more? Yes, I do, because this show is a hoot. Y'all, <laughs> let's discuss. What's up, y'all? It's your boy Beasley here. Hope you all are staying cool, coming kind of collected out there. I want to talk to you guys today about BET. Well, BET, the app. I don't know why they put the great shows on the app and not on the actual channel. But I want to talk to you guys today about BET's Encore. Y'all, <laughs> Carlos King, you have once again did the damn thing. Like, Carlos King, his whole brand is mess and exploitation. But he knows what we want. He knows what we want to see. And he always finds a way to do what nobody else is doing in reality TV. He finds all of these lanes and just carves them out and creates an empire. Like look at Love and Marriage Huntsville, for example. Who would ever thought to go to country-ass Huntsville and create a reality show out of it? Carlos King did. And now we have a whole entire reality show where we put a bunch of washed up R&B bitches into one household, put them all into a group, and make a whole entire, um, try to have them make all a whole entire song together. Like, y'all, whoever would have thought to put every single R&B girl from back in the um, 90s and the 2000s and place them all under one roof to collaborate and get along? Now, it was a recipe for mess and disaster just right out the gate. And y'all, I want to go ahead and not do a full-on review, but I want to give you guys my analysis and thoughts of each and every cast member. So let's get into it, shall we? So starting off, we have Aubrey O'Day. So Aubrey O'Day, as you guys know, is from Danny Decane. Danny Decane, in my opinion, is one of the best girl groups ever made. He, Diddy disbanded them basically because Danny Decane and making the band was a tax write-off. And we're, we're not going to go all the way into it because I'm still salty about that day. But regardless of that, Danny Decane is one of the best girl groups ever made. And their career was short-lived before they even were able to find their wings. Aubrey O'Day was my favorite member of the group. Aubrey O'Day... I love you, girl. I really do. I'm not going to go in on your looks, but I'll just say you're starting to look across between Lil' Kim and Miss Piggy, girl. Like, white woman, I, I got to talk to y'all for a second because it's okay to be white. It's okay to be white. You guys have been relying on it this whole entire time. Not every one of you is meant to be spicy ranch dressing. Some of you guys have to stay being mayonnaise. You, you, you guys are trying to get this black woman aesthetic, and it doesn't work for y'all because it wasn't meant for y'all. Case in point. So, Aubrey is still very talented. She's a great singer. She is great at what she does. She can dance her ass off. And I feel like they should have had somebody else on this show with her as well. Like, I mean, what is Dawn doing? But what is Andrea doing, for that matter? But anyways... Aubrey O'Day, she didn't come to play, and she still has it. Keely Williams, y'all, I never liked Keely, never liked her, even before the whole Natari situation. Y'all, I am a very intuitive individual, especially when I was a kid, because even though we didn't have a peek behind the scenes and no social media back in the day, I knew there was some, I knew that Keely was with the shits. Like, you could just look at her and tell that, like, something was a little off with her. And my, observ my observations were always right about her. To this day, Keely Williams has not grown up at all. She's still a petulant child. She still tries to, like, kind of, like, shake the room and control everybody, throw a rock and hide her hands. Like, that's what Keely Williams does. She makes great for reality television. She's the ultimate villain. She's a great villain. But Keely Williams, girl, like, you still have not learned this whole entire time. Like, you, like, girl, like, I, the only thing I can give Keely Williams is that I did appreciate the fact that she called um, Pam out on being homophobic, and we're going to get into her ass a little bit later. But other than that, Keely, girl, you, you're just a shit starter. You're a shit starter. You're an asshole. You, you, you're mean-spirited. You don't really mean well at all. Like, you're just, nothing about you is genuine, Keely, and that's the problem I have with you. Like, you're just, 
You're just a petty asshole. You're an ass munch. Nobody likes you. Like, Keely, you ruin everything that you're a part of. You ruin the Cheetah Girls. You ruin 3OW. And you girls, 3OW was going to be huge. But you and your um, tired ass sister ruined that whole entire group. And now you're on this show ruining an yet another opportunity. I want Keely Williams to get it together, but at her grown ass age, th th that's just the person that she is. What you see on television, that's her. Shamari DeVoe. Shamari girl. Shamari is, in my opinion, she's a total package. Shamari was, um, if you guys don't know, she was from that group Black back in the day. That was mainly Lisa Lepti's group. They didn't really get to, like, get on their legs. I mean, they had a few hits here and there, like Bring It All To Me and As If. And also, they are mainly known for also starring in the first Bring It On movie, the only good Bring It On movie. Yeah, I said it. And she made a resurgence when she was on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, I personally feel like... Shamar should have got a second chance. I liked Shamar on The Real Housewives of Atlanta. She was a little rough around the edges and she was definitely a season one bitch. But she was really finding her footing and she was becoming kind of like a comic relief character to the whole entire franchise, which was needed. She was a very light individual and she I could tell she was fun to be around. But Shamar's on this show. She's dressed the best. She can still sing. She can still dance and she can still bring everything to the table. Like Shamar can legit bring it all to me and then some. Nivea, y'all, I love Nivea. I I love, love Nivea. Nivea, I could tell, was just an amazing individual. I loved everything she put out except for The Laundromat. A lot of people love that song, The Laundromat. I mainly loved uh, Don't Mess With My Man and OK With Paul Wall. But other than that, like, Nivea is just... You can tell she's just an amazing spirit. Like, her personality just radiates through the screen. She's hilarious. She can still sing, even though she's a little more of, like, a baritone now. But she can sing her ass off. Like, I just love everything that Nivea gives. I really wish that her career would have took off. She, in my opinion, they call her the Black Britney Spears, but she was also coming up with the girls such as, like, Maya and Christina Milian. I kind of put her more in that lane. But she was a pop black princess, and they kind of thwarted her career mainly because I think that she was black and they didn't want her in that pop lane they wanted to keep her in R&B when really what she has was the power of versatility I'm an advocate for Nivea Nivea I you got a good huge fan of me girl I love you to pieces Pam from Total y'all Pam needs a psych evaluation Pam needs to be committed Pam needs she needs some deep therapy y'all Pam you could tell She's trying so hard to suppress herself. There's so much self-hate with inside her. Like, Pam from Total, she... Uh, <sighs> Pam from Total, I'm gonna keep it real, y'all. She suffers from, like, Missy Elliott, Queen Latifah syndrome. Like, girl, we know what the T is, but you don't. Like, uh, Pam, it, it, it's okay. <laughs> it, it, it's okay to be you and be who you are especially at the grown ass age of 40 or however old you are Pam you, you're the oldest of the bunch so you should be able to be more in tune with yourself and who you are but instead you went to the Lord and suppressed yourself without realizing the Lord accepts you and made you who you are Pam you're a stud lesbian just admit it like Pam you done been around the world and ah yah yah and had a bunch of fish on the way like we're not gonna sit here, Pam, and believe you saying that you're straight. Like, it's just not, it, it makes zero dollars and no sense. Now, granted, Aubrey O'Day, she was in your personal space, so I wasn't even mad at you about that, but you did take it a little overboard. It, it, it did dip into, I don't wanna say homophobic territory, but it dipped into like, oh my God, like these repressed emotions are coming back up. Like, reject, reject, reject. Like, that's what happened. That's that's what the situation played out to me, in my opinion. And then on top of that, Pam has a little bit of shits with her when she kind of blamed... I don't want to say the story was completely false, but when she blamed Jackie Long, if you guys know who Jackie Long is, I think he was like either a singer or an actor back in the day, and he's now um, mainly known for marrying Santonia... Santonia... What is her name? Santonia... Santoya Brown. He's known for marrying her straight out of prison. And she kind of put him on blast saying that like he abused her throughout the marriage. I believe it came out that it was all a lie. And Pam kind of got away scot-free with that. But uh, there's some shit with Pam, y'all. Like Pam, she may have this like very calm, soothing demeanor. But she mainly has that demeanor because she's trying to repress who she is. 
But overall, yeah, Pam, you're not a bad human being, girl. But you, you just need some therapy, and you need to get back to who you are, which was a stud. Irish and Lamisha from 702. Y'all love 702. I mainly was hip to 702 back in the day when they sung um, the theme song to Cousin Skeeter on Nickelodeon. Like, that's when I became hip to who they were. And then I didn't really hear their music on the radio, but then they popped up in my life again when they, um, they did like a guest appearance on Sister Sister singing as well. And oh, ever since then, I think when I got into like middle school and high school, that's when I kind of went back into the archives and started jamming their music. And I love 702 to pieces. Uh, Where My Girls At is still like one of the best hits to me to this day. Like I love them. But however, um, Irish and Lamisha, they weren't the singers of the group. Like they were just... Um uh, let's keep it real. Y'all were there for light skin privilege. Like, y'all were there because y'all were light skin and pretty. Um, I mean, I feel sad for Iris. She lost her twin sister, Orish. I thought Lamisha was Orish. But Lamisha is actually Irish's older sister. Correct me if I'm wrong, but acknowledge me when I'm right. And the twin sister, Orish, died. And there were also some other girls in the group. I can't really name their names, but there were, like, a lot of past members of 702. I don't know why the lead singer of 702 didn't make it to this show. I think that they were on a show previously together, and she was kind of like, you know what? No more reality TV. It is what it is. But Irish and Lamisha, I feel bad for them because they're put on the spot having to sing and they can't really... Uh, like, like the problem with them too is that they kind of don't know what they're doing. So, and they're being called out about that and they're being put on Front Street and it's kind of cringy to watch. But that brings me to the last two people to talk about and that is the Cherish Twins, a.k.a. Felicia and Fallon. Now y'all, I don't know how to take these two because they do offer constructive criticism, not even constructive, destructive, destructive criticism, but the criticism that they give to Irish and Lamisha in terms of their singing ability is 100% correct, so I can't be all the way mad at them, but at the same time, them two came in just on moxie, like on 10, like they wanted to be the villains of the show, but honestly, I feel like that's how they are in real life, because if you guys don't know, Cherish was a quartet back in the day, Cherish was big, and the other two members were their older sisters, and allegedly, these two twins, Felicia and Fallon, ran those sisters out of the group. Like, I will never forget that. Like, how are y'all beefing with y'all's own sisters? Like, you guys are four single women in the industry, and you mean to tell me you guys are actually related, and you had the nerve to turn your back on your two sisters? Like, people that instantly would have your back. Like, I don't know if a man got involved between them two, or, like, some of the, some of the members were getting paid more than the other, and the twins wanted more. I guess maybe the twins were the writing the music, and the other sisters weren't doing anything. I don't know. But you two, with your attitude and personality, I could see why the other two sisters aren't fucking with y'all. But I will say, I was here for one of them reading the dog fuck out of Keely Williams. Like, they went... <laughs> Like, they annihilated her ass. Like, that shit was so funny to see. That's why I don't know how to take them to, because I will say the twins make re great reality television. But they're both assholes, but they're smart assholes. They, they are unable to analyze and assess the situation, and they give their genuine thoughts, opinions, and feedback on what is on display on this show. So, I can't even be all the way mad at Felicia and Fallon. Like, it's probably like a whole entire New York Tiffany Polar ascension with them, too. Like, it's like they're the villains and they're hated, but they make great reality television that we will look back on years from now and praise them for. But overall, y'all, Carlos King, you once again have another hit on your hands. He, Carlos is about to become the Tyler Perry of reality television. Um... <laughs> Like I said, y'all, th this show, y'all have to watch and see for yourself. It is on point. Um, I don't know what else to say. I have nothing bad to say about this show. Carlos King continues exploiting the girls because it's working. But those are my views, so be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'm going to come at you guys with some more content. <laughs>